All right. So, Robbie saw Cyrus in the back of a book, testimonial. How did you two come together, how you created your book and your programs that really help people move forward? So, tell me, tell me the connection story. Yeah. So, we were both giving a lecture in Oakland, I believe, and Cyrus was around that area. And Doug had told us, hey, you guys should know each other, you should connect, but we never really got in touch until we met in person. And at that time, I mean, Cyrus, he was doing personal training, he was doing coaching, he was doing all this stuff. I was working at Forks Over Knives, and Cyrus was like, you know, when are you going to leave? Like, when are you going to get me to leave Forks Over Knives? And uh, eventually, uh, 2016, you know, we started doing a little bit of like dating each other and practicing uh, working together as, as, as partners and doing some programs and it went well. And then 2017, we said, you know what, like, let's stop doing like our individual thing. Let's, let's create one go-to place where anybody who's living with diabetes can go to really learn, okay, I want to follow a plant-based diet. I want to execute this. I want to reverse insulin resistance. I want to completely get rid of pre-diabetes. I want to get rid of type 2 diabetes. You know, what do I do? So we created that. I mean, in the movie Forks Over Knives, which if listeners haven't seen, you should check it out. It's a great movie. There's you know, two people in that movie who reverse type 2 diabetes during the documentary. But if you watched it and you said, hey, you know what? I want to do this. There wasn't one go-to destination. There wasn't one website, one book. Like, okay, like I'm going to learn all the details, all the nuances, which there are a lot of when it comes to diabetes. And just like Cyrus was saying, that, that confusion around, well, if I don't eat very many carbs now, my blood sugar goes down, but then I still have problems down the road. Like it's just confusing. And so we decided we're going to create, we're going to create a coaching program. And that's what we did. So that's been our main focus is giving people the opportunity to come in and get that nuanced support because everybody's different. Every situation is different. How you're going to respond to food is different. And we help people not only through the transition, but then a maintenance plan that they can actually sustain for the rest of their lives. And that's been our focus and so that program did so well. We had the opportunity to write a book with Penguin Random House. That book came out in 2020. Great reviews. Check them out on Amazon. A lot of popularity. Became a New York Times bestseller. And we're having a lot of fun continuing to help people through, again, the coaching, but through a lot of education in the book, in webinars, you know, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. We have our own podcast. You name it. But um, our real focus is bringing evidence-based information to people and then helping them implement it through, you know, again, evidence-based guidelines and what you can do to actually make change sustainable, actually make these new habits in your life. And that's what we're doing. That's amazing. In order for people to really trust and believe in the fact that something is going to work, they have to find that consistency. And I think that obviously you have an incredible program that in some ways either taking people on a journey or kind of handholding. But I guess I'll ask Cyrus, you know, as I mean, you were both athletes and, and wild and crazy like I was. So I get it. How do you feel like you're able to help whether somebody has diabetes or not find that consistency combined with I know this is going to be a really tough question. I love and appreciate science. And so how do you get these people to connect these two things? Like this is science, this is going to work, but here's a consistency that's going to kind of like make this snowball effect together so that you can have those long-term results. Cause both of you being diagnosed 20 plus years ago or so, and still being able to eat that pyramid of bananas, have you found like a thing that's like that through line to help people, you know, find that commitment? Yeah. Okay. You bring up a really good point here, which is that sustainability is key because like you can make a number of changes today, but if you can't stick with them in the long term, then, you know, it doesn't really make that much sense. Okay. So here's the way that I think about it. When you change your lifestyle, okay, there's a number of things that you change. You can change the way that you eat. You can change the way that you do fitness. You can change the frequency with which you do fitness. You can start intermittent fasting you can start a meditation practice. You can change the way you communicate with people and the list goes on. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can do. And within a short period of time, you can get overwhelmed because each one of those requires a lot of thought and attention and detail, right? So when we 
teach people how to change their lifestyle, we actively slow people down. And we try and teach people, don't make too many changes too quickly. Because if you do, even though you're excited at the beginning, you're likely to bite off more than you can chew, pun intended, and eventually get to a point where you're like, oh my God, this is, this is work. This is challenging. This is too hard, right? And the last thing that I want you to feel is though changing your lifestyle so that you can become healthier actually feels like homework because then it doesn't, it kind of has the fun out of it, right? So what we teach people how to do is basically make what feel like, you know, kind of like microscopic changes to their diet. And rather than trying to integrate a fully plant-based diet over the course of, I don't know, a week or two weeks, we're like, no, 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 no. Take six months. I don't even care. There's no rush, right? I want you to literally just make a change to one meal. That's it. Just change your breakfast and eat your breakfast in this new way and just stick with that until you feel good about it, until it feels, you know, how big it has to be and where are you going to get the food and do you like eating bananas or maybe you want mangoes, maybe you want chickpeas instead. You figure it out. We'll give you a bunch of options. Just figure that out. Once you feel comfortable with that change, then you may move on to the next change. Then you can start changing your lunch and then eventually your snacks and then eventually your dinner and then eventually your dessert. And again, if that takes you six months, it's totally fine. I got no problem with that, right? The reason that that works is because small changes that occur over the course of long time periods end up sticking. But large changes that happen quickly don't end up sticking. And we've seen this over and over and over again. I mean, there's literally books written about this. And we're just trying to sort of capitalize on that psychology and make sure people understand that a little bit of change today is going to translate to a lot of bit of change in the future. The last thing I'll say is about the sustainability piece is that we encourage people to make choices that are likely to be sustainable into the future. But I like to think of sustainability as not something that you try and achieve. It's something that it's a side effect. So if you can kind of wrap your head around the idea that sustainability in anything you do usually comes from the, that thing improving the quality of your life, right? And if I were to give you any task, whether it's fitness or whether it's changing your diet or whether it's changing your communication habits, it doesn't matter. If, if it improves your life, you're probably going to do it again and you're going to do it again and again and again and again and again, right? So if you can take these little bite-sized habits and compound them on one another over the course of time, then the sustainability is likely to just happen and you don't have to work for it because you're improving the quality of your life and you're enjoying yourself. And then before you know it, you're six months into it and you're like, hell, this is my new lifestyle. How did that happen? I absolutely love that because I do feel that people put pressure on themselves because of someone else's already success. You know, like we have, you probably did Insanity, Robbie, because you saw the before and after pictures. Or maybe it was because <laughs> you saw me and I was so nice. But, <laughs> that was what it was, bro. I know, I know. I didn't want to say that, but I, you know, I figured <laughs> I know the truth. That takes me to the next question, which is obviously Mastering Diabetes, the book, but also the coaching program. And I kind of would love for you to tell me, I'm sure it has a lot of what Cyrus said as well, but it's like, how does the book tie into the coaching program? And, you know, what is really unique about both for people and the success you've seen as people go through this process? Yeah. So the coaching is really focused on the personalized nuances that each person brings to the table. And a lot of people come to us with more than just diabetes, right? There's high blood pressure. There's oftentimes a lot of gut challenges. So they start, you know, people increase their fiber intake. There's some things that happen. And when you're trying to do it on your own and you're experiencing symptoms that you just can't really understand, you kind of get lost. And sometimes you're like, ah, oh, this isn't working for me. I'm just going to go to something else. But if you have a coach who's been there, done that over and over and over again, it's like, oh, I know exactly why that's happening. Here's what we're going to do to address it. It gives you a lot more confidence and a lot of reassurance every step of the way. So it's really about... The book lays the foundation. It has a lot of science, okay? So just like Cyrus said, over 800 uh, citations in this book. We do provide meal plans in there. So you can follow the meal plans. It's one week at a time. So there's two 21-day meal plans, 
depending on how insulin resistant you are. So the book has a quiz in there that you can take if you can figure out, okay, which meal plan should I start with so I don't see a bunch of blood glucose spikes when I'm starting out. And so the book has that foundation. But then it's like, okay, you know, I got family members. And uh, how am I going to feed them? How are we going to do this diet with, with the kids not necessarily on board? Or maybe your husband's not on board yet. Your partner's not with you. Like, that's okay. Like, there's ways to get around that. Let's talk about it. Let's, like Cyrus was talking about, how do you improve your communication? This is stuff, it goes beyond just diabetes numbers, right? Like, there's, there's a lot of communication. How do you navigate restaurants? How are you going to travel? Okay, wow, we got, you know, holidays right around the corner. How are you going to navigate those situations? And the accountability is huge. I mean, you know that, Sean, in your industry. I mean, accountability is big time. Once you've made a commitment, you've invested some resources, and I want this result, our job is to coach you to the result that you want. You decide. We're not the food police. We're not telling you what to do. We're just going to help you understand the consequences so you get the goal that you want. And so it's really that, that interaction, the you know, the coaches and the clients create a really, really close relationship, close bond. People work in our program for, you know, six to 12 months. We're all about longevity and really setting people up for long-term success.